This is group two and we are doing a pharmacoeconomic evaluation. The article in question is cost effectiveness analysis of metformin and dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors compared to metformin and sulfonylureas for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. The first thing while looking at this evaluation is to look at the title and determine if it is appropriate and complete. So looking at this, we say, does it indicate the type of study? And it does. It's the cost effectiveness analysis, also known as the CEA. Does it define the comparators? In this study, it's comparing DPP-4 inhibitors with sulfonylureas for second-line treatment with metformin, which is clearly stated. What is not stated is the location of where this study was completed. Now, is a clear objective stated? The purpose of the study was clearly stated in the background of the abstract, as the purpose of the study was to evaluate the long-term cost effectiveness of DPP-4 inhibitors compared to sulfonylureas as a second-line therapy in combination with metformin in patients with type 2 diabetes. Were the appropriate alternatives or comparators considered? When looking at this, you want to look at if it's compared with the next best alternative or alternative it will replace. In that sense, it did look at how sulfonylureas are a common second-line therapy because of their quick action of lowering blood glucose levels, but recent safety concerns such as their hypoglycemia risk and weight gain have questioned the appropriateness of their use compared to other alternatives such as DPP-4 inhibitors, which have a lower risk of those side effects. But as they have a lower risk of side effects, they also have less of an effect on glycemic lowering than sulfonylureas. While also looking at alternatives, the ADA guidelines show that there are more than two alternatives for the second-line treatment of diabetes after the use of metformin, such as TZDs, SGLT2 inhibitors, GLP-1 agonists, and insulin. As you can see, our study only looked at sulfonylureas and DPP-4 inhibitors, which are not the only two options for second-line treatment of diabetes. Therefore, it was, a non, it was not inclusive in the study. A comprehensive description of the competing alternatives was not given. Another researcher would not be able to replicate this study with the information provided. The author did not specifically state the doses that were used, but they did note that they followed the current type 2 diabetes treatment guidelines per the 2015 ADA and AACE slash ACE. No doses were noted within the guidelines and the length of treatment cycle was one year. The perspective of the, state of the study was addressed. Um, the perspective is from the U.S. healthcare payer perspective. The type of study was also stated. Um, it says cost-effective analysis. All important and relevant costs were included. Based on perspective, it was the U.S. healthcare payer, and direct healthcare costs related to type 2 diabetes obtained include both drug costs and treatment costs for diabetes related medical events such as hypoglycemia, weight gain, and cardiovascular events, and the costs were collected for an appropriate period of time. The cost and life years gained over the 25 year time horizon were estimated for each treatment pathway. Um, if costs are estimated from other research, are they referenced? They are. For example, the anti-diabetic drug cost data were collected from the National Average Drug Acquisition Cost data set. And there is, just, there is justification for any important costs or consequences that were not included. For example, weight gain caused by the insulin was not included in the cost effectiveness estimations. The author explained this because including the additional weight gain rate for each study arm would make the Markov model too complex for, this, for the purposes of this study. We also looked at whether the authors mentioned important rele relevant outcomes. The main study outcome was the incremental cost in life years gained, which is a study of the cost effectiveness. But they also measured health outcomes, including treatment failure, death rate, hypoglycemia, weight gain, heart failure, and stroke. While these are good outcomes to measure, it may have also been beneficial to include effects on blood glucose levels as a health, health outcome because we are studying anti-diabetic medications. In addition, Microvascular complications were not included because they are associated with uncontrolled blood glucose levels and not the use of specific drugs. We also looked into the costs looked at in this study and determined whether or not adjustment or discounting was appropriately conducted. Since this study was a retrospective study, clinical and cost data were collected from previous studies and other readily available secondary data sources. Retrospective analyses required discounting. 
costs and outcomes within this study were discounted at a 3% annual discount rate, which was appropriate. All costs were adjusted to 2015 U.S. dollars using the All Urban Consumers That's Easily Adjusted U.S. City Average All Items Consumer Price Index. We also looked into whether assumptions were stated in the article and whether they were reasonable. We believe that the assumptions were reasonable, and they included that the patients entering the model were 60 years old, that the direct healthcare cost in each state, with the exception of death, was estimated for each year through the study time horizon. Also, that the rates of cardiovascular events and treatment failure and insulin doses were assumed to remain constant throughout the study time horizon. And finally, the last assumption assumed that patients were adherent to anti-diabetic medications when estimating the outcomes and drug costs. Limitations were also addressed in this study, including that the Markov model assesses the differences in alternative therapy pathways considering a defined set of assumptions, but does not intend to represent the clinical progression of patients with diabetes. Also, the death hazard ratio was approximated based on results taken from a two-year trial. The study time horizon for the base case was set at 25 years because survival data was available only until patients reached 85 years old. A stronger model could incorporate death rate data for a longer time horizon for patients with diabetes. So sensitivity analyses were conducted for important estimates or assumptions. The one-way and probabilistic sensitivity analysis found that results were not sensitive to changes in the parameters used in the base case. The metformin and DPP-4 inhibitor discounted incremental cost versus metformin in sulfonylureas was $11,849. The incremental life years gained was 0.61. The ICER was $19,420 per life year gained for patients given metformin and DPP-4 inhibitors. And the ICER estimated in the probabilistic sensitivity analysis was $19,980 per life year gained, which shows that the results were not sensitive. So were extrapolations beyond the population studied proper? Um, the study results were actually not extrapolated to other populations. Uh, they weren't extrapolated to other um, ages other than 60 to 85 or other second-line agents other than DPP-4 inhibitors and sulfonylureas. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the bias of this study and the results presented. So, first of all, were the conclusions overstated or overextrapolated in the results section? No, we did not think the conclusions were overstated or overextrapolated. Um, were there appropriate alternatives? Yes, but as we talked about earlier, the alternatives were not all inclusive according to the ADA guidelines for a second line type 2 diabetes treatment. And did we believe the results of the study? Yes, we did. There were no overextrapolations or overstatements. Proper references were cited, reasonable costs and outcomes were collected, and appropriate discounting was used. These are some of the references that we used, um, and this has been a Farmco economic evaluation. We hope you enjoy.